Hello again. In this tutorial, I'll be going over the new developments in the modding scene that relate to retexturing. I'll walk through the steps of adding your new retextures to the game using two new methods of creating snakebite texture mods. I hope you'll find this helpful. So to start things off, you'll want to download the latest version of the Snakebite Mod Manager. Currently it's at 0.9.0.3. You can download it here on Nexus Mods in the Files tab. You'll also want to download Bob Dole's Auto PFTXS tool here on his GitHub. Under Releases, just download the Auto PFTXS tool V02. I'll link both of these in the description down below. Once you have the latest version of Snakebite installed and you have the Auto PFTXS tool unpacked, we can go ahead and get started. So what I have here are the diffuse textures for Snake's Tiger Stripe Fatigues. This tutorial assumes that you already know how to find these textures. You can still refer to my old tutorial if you still need help finding those files. The first step I'm going to do is convert these to a DDS file using Aptex tool. We've already been over this in the first tutorial. I'm going to open it up here in Photoshop and make some changes to this texture. So here we have the textures we're going to be editing. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to make some quick changes to make sure we can see it in game. I'm going to invert the colors. And once we're finished with our changes, we'll go ahead and save it as a DDS file. We're going to save it as a DXT1 texture. Go into Sharpening, make sure this number is 0. Go into Image Options and make sure that your compression quality is set to highest. And make sure it's also generating MIP maps. Uh, once all of these things are good to go, we can save the file. So now we're ready to convert it back to Fox textures. We're going to exit out of Photoshop here, and we're going to check on our changes with Sage Thumbs. It's properly inverted, so we're just going to open the DDS file with uh, Ftex tool. You can see that the file's updated based on the date modified, so these are going to be the files we add to the game. You may recall from our first tutorial that all of these files had to be packed into a pftxs file in order to see them properly in-game. Since the release of that tutorial, we now have two new and easier methods of packing our retextures. For the first method, we'll use the auto pftxs tool made by Bob Dole Owned You. As the name implies, this tool can automatically repack pftxs files so there's no need for us to manually edit the XML file anymore. We can also unpack PFTXS files from this tool, just like GZS tool. Just drag and drop them onto the EXE. For the next step, open up the newly unpacked folder and add your files into the directory structure, replacing the old files. Now we jump back to the outside of the unpacked folder, and this time we'll drag and drop the folder itself onto the exe. The tool will then automatically pack our new files into the updated pftxs file. Alright, now we're ready to turn it into a snakebite mod file. For the next step, we need to place this file into a directory structure that reflects where we found it in the archive files. In my case, I found this file in Chunk0, Assets, TPP, Pack, Player, and then Parts. This means that I need to begin by creating a root folder for the mod, then create an Assets folder, and in that folder, create another folder named TPP. 
then pack, and then player, and then parts. Now we need to take our updated pftxs file and move it into our parts folder. Now that we've got the file in the right spot, it's time to open MakeByte. The latest version of MakeByte was installed on your computer automatically when you updated SnakeByte. In the top right corner of the window, click the ellipses button and then navigate to the root folder for your mod. It is very important that you select the root folder for your mod and not the assets folder. Your mod will not install properly unless you select the root directory. If you selected the right directory, you should see the Assets folder listed like so at the beginning of each mod file. I should also note that the A in Assets needs to be capitalized. A mod with a lowercase a in Assets will not install properly. So all that's left now is to fill out the mod info, and then let's build the file. Now let's go ahead and install it so we can test it out in the game. And there you have it. The changes will now appear successfully in game. As you can see, Auto PFTXS Tool offers a faster and simpler approach to creating retexture mods. Now let's talk about the other retexture method I mentioned. As of Snakebite 0.9.0, certain texture files no longer actually need to be included into a PFTXS file. Instead, we can leave them outside of the PFTXS as long as they're in the correct file structure when we go to build the Snakebite mod. To demonstrate this new method, let's rewind the tutorial back to before we modified the pftxs file. We still need to unpack the pftxs in order to swap out the vanilla ftex and the .1.ftexs file with our modified versions. Let's go ahead and open the pftxs file with GZS tool. After it's unpacked, we'll take our modified .ftex and the .1.ftexs file and move them into the folder. We'll replace the original files, and then we'll take note of the current file path. In the pftxs, I opened Assets, TPP, Kara, SNA, and then Pictures, and this is where I replaced the vanilla texture files. Now backing out of the pftxs, let's repack it by opening the xml file with gzs tool. Just like last time, we now need to create a directory structure that mirrors where the pftxs is located in the game archives. I'll create a folder for assets, tpp, pack, player, and then parts, just like last time. And now I'll move the pftxs into the parts folder. The pftxs is good to go, but we still need to add the .2.ftxs and the .3.ftxs into the snakebite file. Like with the pftxs, the remaining textures need to be put in a folder structure that reflects the texture archives. The pftxs folder structure will be the same as the texture archives, so when we go into texture 0, you'll recall from the pftxs file that I opened assets, tpp, kara, sna, and then pictures to find the vanilla textures. To copy this path, let's go back to our snakebite file and navigate to assets, tpp, and then create a new folder for Kara, 
And then inside that folder, we'll add SNA. And then pictures. Now that the structure is complete, I'll move the remaining textures into the folder. Take the .2.ftxs and the .3.ftxs and place them in pictures. All right, now the file is ready for Makebyte. Let's open that up again. Like last time, click the ellipses button and navigate to the root of your Snakebyte mod folder. Once you select the folder, make sure all the mod files begin with assets, and then fill out the mod description. Now it's time to build the mod file. And now let's install it to test it out in game. As you can see, this retexturing method worked as well. The changes appear successfully. Of the two methods from this tutorial, choosing which of these methods to use is largely up to you. However, there are some things to consider before deciding. Using the Auto PFTXS tool is a little easier for the modder, and it works well. However, Packing too many textures into a PFTXS has been known to cause issues with the game. A bloated PFTXS file may even cause the game to stutter and freeze. The second method is considered to be the proper way of modifying textures. It won't cause issues with the game. A good rule of thumb is to use the first method only if you're editing a few textures for a PFTXS, which typically won't result in stuttering issues. If you're changing a lot of textures inside the PFTXS files, it would probably be better to use the proper method and leaving them outside of the PFTXS file instead, in their own directory structures. In closing, I hope you found this tutorial useful. I always look forward to seeing new mods on the Nexus, and I hope you'll consider publishing your own to, you know, keep the dream alive. If you have any questions concerning this tutorial, or modding in general, please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. Good luck with those retextures.